Well, hello again from Kingston, where it's been another rather unsettled week, but the weather did permit us to complete the paving on Highway 15 and Gore Road. In fact, you can see the paver um, loading up for departure. Rest of the week is interesting, so let's get into it. Thanks again for watching. We'll begin this week with what must be its crowning achievement, the completion of paving of the intersection that Gore Road makes with Highway 15. On Monday morning, faces and equipments familiar to us from earlier work by Williams Paving appeared on scene. In addition, a road sweeper from local company Hewson got down to the work of cleaning and preparing the surface. Many of the smaller, marginal tasks were serviced that day by a smaller paver fed directly. On Tuesday, as larger sections were addressed, a larger paver got down to work. And early on Wednesday morning it was time to bring out the big guns in the shape of the Road Tech Shuttle Buggy. This massive machine takes asphalt directly from the delivery trucks, churns it to maintain a constant temperature and then delivers it directly to the paver. With a steady supply and no physical contact, it allows the paver to run almost continuously. Everything was going really well on Thursday until rain stopped playing, leading to a forced halt and early cleanup. Come dawn's early light on Friday, it was back into position and off to the races. The truck feeds the buggy. The buggy feeds the paver. Then it's into position and let's get the job done. Even as the last asphalt was being laid, a crew was busy measuring, preparing and making the road markings on Highway 15. And by day's end, it was goodbye and thank you to the paving crew. The Tomlinson team this week completed preparations of the sidewalk by the dry stone wall at the library. That allowed Sousa Ready Mix to come in on Tuesday and frame it up and then pour the concrete on Thursday. Not forgetting that in concrete it's all about the finish. Nowhere is this more evident than in some of the detail work. There was a sense of completion throughout the East End, such as in this work, cleaning up embankments beside the sidewalks. The excavation of a shallow trench between the cut at Point St Mark and the bridge marked the beginning of a fence which will cut road noise. An aptly named stone slinger vehicle then proceeded to fill the trench with fine gravel. The first of almost a hundred large concrete blocks which will form the base of the fence was delivered on Tuesday. By week's end, the majority of them would be in place. Turning to the steel span, a major milestone was reached this week when the crew led by Joel 
completed all of the form work required, giving the iron workers from ABF a clear field on which to proceed. A determination to make progress was clear on the east end of the concrete girders too, where spans 16 and 17 saw several concrete slabs laid. And underlay strips are required for every one. Conditions may be far from ideal, but it's important that the safety boat is on station and we salute their work. We'll go to wildlife this week, watching Lucy Linkbelt move to work again in the West, and take a moment to say goodbye to all the folks from Tomlinson, whose last week this was, and who've worked so hard for many months. Wish them luck in the future. That, as they say, is another week in the bag. It's a short week next week, before everybody takes a break for Christmas and the New Year. And I'm sure you'll join me in wishing the whole workforce a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.